Hello, good evening everybody. Um, welcome and um, thank you for tuning in to my Facebook live stream again. And today we are running through the social media roundup for the month of August. Um, my name is Natalie Luckham. I run the social media training and um, management agency Naturally Social. So every month I um, take to Facebook Live right here on my Facebook page and bring you the latest updates of all the things in social media that's been taking place this month and what that means to you. So a few house rules really are um, if you have any comments or questions as we go along, pop them in the comments box below and I will be sure to answer them. Um, if you think there's anybody who would be interested in listening, joining in, finding out a bit more about um, all the things that happened in social media this month, then um, tag them in the comments box below. Or if you're on a mobile device, you can actually use the share button, which is the bottom left icon on your phone as you're watching it. Share it out to um, the people that you want to um, invite on in and um, yeah, I would love for them to connect with me. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, go through the main changes that have happened in um, accounts like on platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, WhatsApp, which has been a big thing this month. Um, and as I said, if you've got any questions, let me know. Stay right to the end because um, so I'm going to be giving you my pro tip for this month and we are talking about advertising on social media for my tip today. Cool, and if you've, um, if you can use the uh, reaction buttons, that would be great. Give me some thumbs up, some likes, some love, some smiley faces, that would be amazing. Uh, and anything I do talk about, then I will share the links to those articles or resources where you can find out more information later on. Okay, so let's start by talking about Facebook. A um, couple of things there in that um, there's been another change to the algorithm on Facebook. Um, so last month I talked about how it was starting to prioritise different news, um, different uh, different things in people's news feeds, so it's prioritising family and friends again, so that's making it more difficult for Facebook pages to get their content seen. And they've had a slight tweak again, which is kind of giving the favour back to business pages ever so slightly. Um, but people keep asking me since that's happened, you know, how, how do I win against this? How do I actually get what I'm doing seen by my audience? And all I'd say is that you know, make sure that you're posting stories that are relevant to what your audience wants to see. Think about what they might care about and, and concentrate on that. Also tap into your insights, your analytics that are on your Facebook page. Um, they're going to tell you what works best with your fans, your followers and your audience. So utilise that and that will help you ascertain exactly what time of day what day and what type of post to put out that should give you that should put you on the front foot really in terms of making sure you've got a lot of reach on your content or as much reach as possible the other change um, on facebook this month has been the layout of facebook business pages uh, you might have looked at if you do own one or you follow people on facebook uh, businesses or organizations you might notice the layout has changed um, I think that is a great thing, it looks much cleaner, much slicker, it's in keeping with the mobile app a lot more, but I think more, imp more importantly, particularly if you're a small business, I would go as far as to say that, you know, when you're up and running and just getting started, a Facebook page could probably now um, be better than creating a website to start you off with, it's a, it's a great substitute. It looks like a website, it feels like a website, it has a menu down the left hand side, it makes it, makes it easy for people to access your content. Um, it's got, it, it accentuates the message facility a lot more so people can contact you directly. Um, and yeah, I think it's just a great opportunity um, for businesses to actually utilise their page 
quote like a website rather than just a Facebook page. Um, what, this, what that does mean though is if you had a Facebook page for a while and you now converted over onto the new look, make sure you update your cover photo and your profile picture and um, just review your about info and check that everything is optimised and you've got as much clarity there as possible. Fab, so that was all everything about, um, about Facebook. Quick touch upon um, Twitter. Twitter has announced that it is now, hi Tash, nice to see you here. Um, Twitter is now opening up moments. So this is a feature if, you, if you're on Twitter that um, it is like real time news curation basically. That's up to date, up till now, sorry. It's only been curated by people who probably work at Twitter and they put everything into a feed together. It's now put out an announcement that it's going to be opening that up more publicly um, so that it ultimately mirrors this trend with Snapchat and Instagram stories where you're going to be able to um, create much more in the moment, real time content that can be accessed by anyone. Um, so yeah, it's jumping on the bandwagon a bit, but that's great. I think every platform is recognising that whole storytelling is the way to market yourself in this day and age on social media. The difference that it does have over the other two will be, hi Trish, the difference that it will have over the other two is that you um, don't lose the content, it's not quite ephemeral. You can actually pause on a tweet or pause on a video, rewind it, and then keep progressing forward. So it was just that extra step on, I think, from what Snapchat introduced, what Instagram developed, and now we've got Twitter. That's only going to be available to um, influencers and large brands, I think, to start off with, but that will undoubtedly be made much more widely available um, over the sort of coming months, but I'll keep you all posted on that. Um, speaking about video, huge change for LinkedIn. LinkedIn is now um, supporting native video, which is pretty big. There's a lot of B2B marketers out there, I'm sure, who are always asking, you know, how can I make the most of LinkedIn? Um, yeah, so before you used to be able to um, record YouTube videos, share those directly on the platform, embed those as links, but now you can create um, video. Specifically, there's an app out called an app now out called LinkedIn Record, and it's only available to again influencers to begin with, but it will be rolled out more widely over sort of the coming months once they get a feel for how people are actually using it and how popular it is. What it's going to allow you to do is actually film and share yourself answering questions that are specific to your industry. Now your followers, your fans, your, you know, whatever you've got on your, on your LinkedIn, they can submit those questions and then you, uh, then you then host your live Q&A, which is an amazing opportunity for recruiters out there, particularly recruitment departments of organisations who perhaps want to give that, tap into that massive audience on LinkedIn who are looking to understand why would I want to work for such a, such an organisation or such a business. Um, you know, and again, thought leaders out there being able to share their knowledge of their industry. This is going to be a really powerful tool. So I will share a link about that new app on LinkedIn, um, but definitely start factoring that in if you work for a larger organisation particularly. I think that's going to be a great tool on that platform. Okay, so next up, we're going to talk about Instagram business accounts. They are now widely rolled out and available to all. Um, I flipped mine over on uh, this morning, actually, and I know a few people have, have been able to convert theirs over the last couple of weeks at least. So literally, if you go into your, if you have an Instagram account that you use for business, open up the app, go onto your settings, which is a little cog in the top right hand corner, and then there'll be an option to switch to business profile. Um, Instagram accounts for business are great. The features that you're going to get are, um, are really in, uh, an integral part of your marketing strategy ultimately. You can now add a contact button. So if anybody sees your content and thinks, oh, actually, you know, if you're a retail shop particular, I'm thinking, sees your content and thinks, oh, I want to buy that or go there or see somebody in the flesh about these things that you're promoting. You'll now have a direct contact button, which can either take you to a uh, to maps, which it will show people how to get to your physical location, or it can be a contact button where they can call you, message you, or email you. Um, and also, you'll get analytics. 
and the analytics are brilliant. It's sort of plugged into your Facebook page, but it's going to tell you the um, the most the, the highest performing posts that you're putting out on that channel, which again is a great way to now that there is an algorithm on Instagram as well. It will allow you to tailor your content to meet people's needs. You can also start um, creating paid for advertisements directly on Instagram, um, which is great. So it's, a, it's bringing that Facebook tool over onto its, um, its sister channel um, and you can do it directly from the app. So it's really quick and easy to start advertising out there. Um, so have a play, have a, make sure you convert it over sooner the better and then start having a look at it. I'd be interested to know what you guys think. If you have put your account onto um, a business account, that'd be great. Um, so that's Instagram business accounts, Instagram stories, which has been the biggest change this month um, on the platform, which everyone's been talking about. In effect, Instagram stories is a, a direct replica of Snapchat. It has recognised the growth of Snapchat and the interaction and it has copied that element onto its platform. Instagram stories sit at the top of your newsfeed when you log into the app and what they are are ultimately a curation of short pictures or videos that have happened in that last 24 hours. So it's giving the users on Instagram and your followers a more backstage view of who you are and what you do. Um, I've had quite a big debate with a few people about whether or not they're going to take off, whether or not they're any good, what do I think about it? And, you know, I think it's great that it recognises that storytelling is a huge um, factor in marketing, especially social marketing right now. I don't think it's going to um, kill off Snapchat and um, I don't even think it's going to be massively popular on the app. In fact, Instagram have released statistics today, um, I think it's about a month in since they launched Stories, um, to say that uh, that show um, only a third, I think, of their yeah, third of their their users, that, um, are, the user base, are actually um, utilizing Stories. So it hasn't really been that huge, and most of those are probably just playing with it to have a, to have a sense of can I use it or I must use it to those bigger brands. I mean, don't get me wrong, if you've got people like the Body Go Coach, for example, who's got a million followers on Instagram, you know, using something like Instagram Stories is, is a great opportunity for them to further leverage their reach and, and connect in a way that their users really want to. If you're a small business with, you know, a couple hundred followers, um, it's just another thing to update, potentially, um, and I'm not sure you're going to get the same interaction and engagement as you do over on Snapchat. And certainly that's not what I, and that's certainly what I've experienced to date as well. But again, I'd be really interested to hear what you guys, have you got an experience of it? The main differences really between the two are that there's far less functionality on um, Instagram stories. You can't edit it. You can't add filters. Um, you can't doodle on it as much as you can on Snapchat. So I think that will ev eventually change, but I think that's probably um, a, a, a negative for that channel. Um, but yeah, so I'll share a link on a, uh, on a story I've written about Instagram stories on a blog post and see what you guys think and let me know. Snapchat, on the other hand, their biggest news um, this month has been in response to Instagram creating stories. They have now um, bought a search and discovery app called Verb, which might not mean a lot to many people, but ultimately the biggest moan about Snapchat for marketers is that there is no search functionality. So how can their businesses be found by the people? Now that Instagram, which does have a search facility, has replicated their story function. This is a big step for them because it's showing its users that it's serious about the, um, the forward direction of the app. And I would say that this is gonna see a search and discover functionality of the app before long, which is gonna be great for onboarding people onto the app for using it for business purposes. Um, let me know if you've got any further questions about that. Um, as I said, I'll keep you updated as and when all that kind of comes into fruition. Um, WhatsApp then, finally, to talk about WhatsApp. There's been a big hoo-ha over the last sort of couple of weeks because WhatsApp is beginning to integrate um, 
business services into its app before the end of the year. What that means is it's, it's releasing um, new terms and conditions um, that says it's going to give your data, your contact information, your phone number alone um, to Facebook because Facebook owns WhatsApp. Um, People are kind of, some people are in a bit of hoo-ha about this and are thinking, you know, why would I want, I'm going to stop using WhatsApp, it's giving my data away. What it isn't doing is showing your messages, so its messages are still encrypted, nobody can see what you send on WhatsApp, but it's just, it's just softening its privacy policy to, in order to let Facebook have the contact numbers that are being used on, um, on WhatsApp. And uh, then it's going to allow people who use Facebook to advertise to people on WhatsApp. Um, so from a business point of view, from, so from a user point of view, you might be a little bit scared about that. But what I would say is that you do control the ability, um, you do control your settings on WhatsApp. So you will be able to say, no, I don't want to give my data to anybody. And if you do, you can always change your settings to say, I don't want to be marketed to because such things that it might be able to you might start seeing through whatsapp with its business services is i don't know receipts for things you've bought um delivery notifications um travel reminders as well as the odd marketing message potentially um so and that again is going to be based on the data that you have with facebook what companies do you interact with what interests do you have and then they'll decide who they then send that marketing material out to. And again, you can switch it off if you want, um, or you can um, leave it on and see what sort of response you get. Um, it might be really useful. You might end up getting really good tailored content from um, companies you actually care about. And having that information into, into a channel that you're using quite often, regularly like WhatsApp, is a win-win for both sides. Uh, and particularly if you're a bigger business or organisation and you look at using stuff like SMS texting facilities, they can be quite pricey and Facebook is still pretty cheap for advertising as, as far as social advertising goes. So it's a really good opportunity for you to think about where you invest your advertising spend potentially. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it about WhatsApp. Um, so don't panic about your data. You can tell it whether, whether or not you want to share it or not. Your messages will still be encrypted. No one's going to be able to see those things. Um, and yeah, once it does start happening, I'll let you know. And I would be really interested to hear about your experiences with it. Okay, guys, that's pretty much it, I think. Um, it is... 10 to so I'm just coming to the end and um, we covered Facebook pages don't forget and we covered Twitter Instagram LinkedIn snapchat don't forget the replay will be available afterwards so share it and watch it back if you've got any questions pop it in the comment box I'll be more than happy to answer I'll share the links to some of those things that I've discussed so you can read up in further detail um, my next one will obviously be at the end of September. I hope you guys can be there. And I'm going to finish on my top tip. My top tip this month is around advertising on social media. What I would say about advertising on social. First of all, if you're on Facebook particularly, use the ads manager, which is available in your drop down menu when you log into your page. Don't just simply boost post or promote page because you're going to end up wasting a lot of money for what seems to be a great return, but actually the numbers don't probably won't mean a lot. Always use Ads Manager. Second of all, get some help. If you are serious about using um, Facebook for advertising or any social media for advertising, seek expertise, expert help, so get some expertise in, because otherwise, as I said, you will end up wasting money. Social advertising is so much cheaper than, than your standard traditional advertising. So it really is worth investigating and having it as part of your marketing strategy. But as I said, you just need to um, to do it right. And um, there's the, the advertising functionality, a lot of social media is so detailed and targeted. It really does hold other things like magazines um, up against it to say actually what's your worth? Um, because you can show the return on investment.
through through social advertising a lot better in my opinion but if you are thinking about it if you've got any questions if you've had a play with it you get stuck let me know i'll be happy to help um yeah cool that's it from me this month i want to thank you all for watching for those who joined live much love and i will see you all next month i hope peace spread the word see you later bye